WMAQ. Your radio station brings you Chicago White Sox Baseball. From Comiskey Park in Chicago, Illinois, it's White Sox Baseball. White Sox Baseball brought to you tonight by Chevrolet Trucks, trucks that are built to stay tough. By the Champion Spark Plug Company, who reminds you that the fresher your plugs, the better your mileage. By Stroh's Beer, for more than 200 years, real beer lovers know that it's Stroh's. By True Value Hardware Stores, True Value. It's not just a name, it's their way of doing business. And by the Zenith Corporation, the one with Color Sentry automatic picture system and electronic video guard tuning. Hi and a good evening, everybody. Lauren Brown, along with Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall, on a sunlit night before it goes down. The weather has cleared. We're going to have a decent night for baseball. It will be a might cool out here, but the winds are coming out of the southwest. But if you are uh, en route to the ballpark now, grab a sweater and you'll be in great shape. As the White Sox conclude a four-game homestand, two against Seattle and now two against Cleveland, and this is the final appearance of the Cleveland Indians in Chicago here in 1977. The White Sox have won two of the first three games in this homestand and would like to make it three out of four here tonight before moving on to Texas for three games, New York for two, and Milwaukee for four before returning to Comiskey Park to take on the Yankees a week from Monday night. Tonight, the White Sox will send Middleburgo Heights native, a Cleveland suburb, Ken Cravick, a left-hander going against the Indians, and he'll be opposed by a left-hander, mainly a reliever, turned starter on occasion by Jeff Torborg and the Indians. Rick Waits was not made a start in over a month. He worked last week in an inning relief against Minnesota. Both these two pitchers tonight are 0-1 lifetime against their respective opponents. We'll be back to take a look at the starting lineup for both the White Sox and the Indians right after this word. Starting lineup, first off for the visiting Cleveland Indians, Dwayne Kuyper will lead it off and be at second base. Buddy Bell, who had an outstanding game at the plate and in the field last night, will be at third base, batting second. Bill Melton, former White Sox third baseman, who collected his 997th, I take that back, 998th, 999th, and career 1,000 hit here last night, will be the designated hitter, and he'll bat third. Former Cub Andre Thornton will hit cleanup, and he'll be at first base. Ron Pruitt will be in right field, and he'll bat in the number five spot. Bruce Bakke will bat in the sixth spot, and he'll be in left field. Paul Dade will be in center field again tonight, and he'll bat seventh. Fred Kendall doing the catching, and he'll bat eighth. And Frank Duffy at shortstop batting ninth. So we have not seen, and it looks like we won't see, Ray Fossey, the Marion, Illinois product, who's had many a good year in the big leagues, is not in the lineup again tonight. On the mound, it'll be Rick Waits, who has won five and lost four this year. We mentioned to you he was 0-1 lifetime against the White Sox. Just reverse that. He has won one and lost none in his career against the White Sox, that one victory coming a year ago. For the White Sox, who Bob Lemon, the manager of the Sox, is bringing out the lineup to the umpires along with Jeff Torborg of the Indians, it'll be Ralph Gar leading it off in left field. Ralph is only one of two left-handers in the lineup tonight as the White Sox have gone with a predominantly right-handed hitting lineup. This is the first time we've seen Bob Lemon do this in a while, and only two left-handers are in there with seven right-handers tonight. So it'll be Gar leading it off in left field. Alan Bannister will bat second and be at shortstop. George Orta will bat third and be at second base, he being the other left-handed hitter. Then the rest of the way, it's all from the right side. Richie Zist, the designated hitter, batting cleanup. Lamar Johnson at first base, batting fifth. Chet Lemon in center field, batting sixth. Wayne Nordhagen in right field, batting seventh. Eric Soderholm at third base, batting eighth. And Jim Essien doing the catching and batting ninth. On the mound, it'll be left-hander Ken Kravick from Middleburg Heights, Ohio, a Cleveland suburb. He has won seven. He has lost three. His record lifetime against the Indians, 0-1 as he got beat. Even though he pitched fairly well last year against them, the opponent tossed a shutout and he got beat 3 to nothing. So it'll be Kravick against Waits, a pair of left-handers here tonight, as the White Sox, with a game-and-a-half lead over the Minnesota Twins, try to pick up some ground tonight. Minnesota is at Toronto. There is no score in that ball game, and they are at the end of two innings of play. The Twins tonight are going with their ace, Dave Goltz, while the Toronto Blue Jays, who have beaten Seattle only once, 
or have beaten only Minnesota once all year, are sending Bird to the mound. So it's Goats against Bird, no score at the end of two. Kansas City's at Texas tonight for the second night in a row. The Royals defeated the Rangers last night 4-3, to three, and Kansas City is going with Jim Colburn tonight, while the Texas Rangers are going with Doyle Alexander. Probably the best thing that could happen to the White Sox tonight, obviously, is a White Sox victory, coupled with a Minnesota loss. But looking at that Kansas City-Texas series, Kansas City won last night and gained a game. Texas did not gain any ground. So probably what would be best tonight is to see Texas win, where they would stay the same, and Kansas City drop a game to the White Sox. Therefore, be in the same situation with Texas and Kansas City as the White Sox were going into last night's affair. And that would make a three out of four homestand, which uh, would be pretty advantageous for the White Sox because they came into town on beginning this homestand with a half game lead over Minnesota. That extended to two games over Minnesota. And then with the Twins idle and the Sox losing last night, it went back to a game and a half. And the Chicago White Sox take the field. degree winner in voice from Illinois State University singing our national anthem here tonight. Defensively, let's take a look at the White Sox. Jim Essien behind the plate warming up the left-hander Ken Kravick right now. Lamar Johnson's at first, George Orta at second, Alan Bannister at short, and Eric Soderholm at third. In the outfield, Ralph Gar in left, Chet Lemon in center, and Wayne Nordhagen in right field tonight. Our umpires, rookie Vic Voltaggio calling the balls in strikes. Marty Springstad at first, Larry Barnett at second, and Jim Evans at third. This program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Chicago White Sox solely for the entertainment of our audience and any rebroadcast or other use of this play-by-play -play description and the account of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago White Sox is prohibited. Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall and I are employees of and are paid by WMAQ Radio for our play-by-play -play descriptions and accounts of these games. WMAQ and the Chicago White Sox share mutual rights of announcer approval. While the White Sox AAA Club Iowa is hosting Indianapolis tonight, and we bring it up at this point in time to tell you that Chris Snap, who the White Sox sent down after losing Friday to Kansas City, is starting for Iowa tonight. So Chris did report, and he is starting that game tonight. 
This afternoon, the Phillies defeated Montreal 10-5, so they now lead the Chicago Cubs by three full games coming into that four-game weekend series. Pittsburgh is leading the Mets 3-0 at the end of four tonight, and Houston beat San Francisco 7-5 today. In the American League, Boston's jumped out in front of California 2-0 at the end of one inning of play. The Red Sox trying to win their 12th in a row. The Yankees lead Oakland 2-0 at the end of two, and Seattle out in front of Baltimore 1-0 at the end of three. Minnesota, Toronto, no score, and Kansas City at Texas just underway. Dwayne Kuyper leads it off. Here's the first pitch to Kuyper, and it's up high a ball. Kuyper went two for four and drove in a run last night with a sacrifice fly. Eric Soderholm playing in at third. The infield and the outfield still damp with the additional rain in the Chicagoland area today. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and it's a fastball. Low, ball two. Kuyper will be followed by Buddy Bell and Bill Melton. Left-hander ready. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Here's a swing and a one-hopper right back to the mound. Kravick leaped up and got it, and he throws to Lamar Johnson to get him. That throw down around his ankles. He really got on top of that ball. But he got him, and there's one down here in the first inning, and Buddy Bell, the batter, had a fine game defensively last night and also hit a pair of doubles. Baylor hit his 17th home run of the year for California in the second. Nobody on. They cut that Boston two-run lead in half. They... Time has been called up in Toronto because of rain, so that game will be delayed a little bit. Bell hitting 291, eight homers and 50 RBIs. They had a rain delay, and then they got underway at Toronto, and then they called time again. Now, Toronto beat Minnesota the other night. It was the first time they had done so after six straight losses. Here's the pitch inside of all. In that Pirate game, Bill Robinson in his 18th home run of the year in the first with a man on for the Pirates. And as we mentioned, they lead now 3 to nothing at the end of four. Here's a pitch inside a ball, ball two. So here to the first two hitters, Kravick has fallen behind 2-0. Oh. White Sox and the Indians hooking up for the final time in Chicago this year. Here's the pitchers are swinging a long fly ball, curving foul and into the upper deck out of play. Strike one. The White Sox beat the Indians five in a row. Three straight at Cleveland, two straight here. The Indians have come back to win the last two against the White Sox. Outfield playing Bell around to the left. Kravick in the windup, the 2-1 pitch. Fastball low and inside a ball, 3-1. and one. Buddy Bell, son of former Cincinnati star Gus Bell. Hits safely in 12 of his last 13 games. Takes the 3-1 pitch. Low a ball. He walked him. So Bell is on and Bill Melton the batter. Melton went 3 for 5 and drove in a run last night. And his three hits gave him 1,000 career hits. Told Tom Greer... In the Sun-Times today that he thought he'd like to see the White Sox win. He was very philosophical about his playing days here and about leaving. Here's a called strike in the inside corner in the first pitch to him. Ken Kravick on the mound, making his 15th start of the year after his eighth win. He dropped a tough 3-2 to -two decision in Kansas City Sunday afternoon, allowing only five hits in eight innings. Had a five-hitter against the Indians a year ago, but got beat three to nothing. Here's the pitch, and it's low of all. One ball, one strike. Tonight's Senior Citizens Night. White Sox have distributed 5,000 discount tickets for the How, When, and Where to Retire show at McCormick Place. One ball, one strike, one out, runner at first. We're in the first inning if you just joined us. Kravik ready. Ashland, Ohio University product. Here's the pitchers, a check swing and a ball. Kravick with his hand on his hip thought he got that one. He hasn't gotten a lot of help. Two balls and a strike. He's fallen behind every hitter here in the inning. Left-hander ready. Tosses over to first instead and Bell is back. Rocky Calavito doing the coaching over at first for the Indians and Joe Nosick doing the coaching at third. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Inside a ball, three and one. 
Three balls and a strike. Andre Thornton in the on-deck circle. Weatherman promised great weather today, but he didn't say it wouldn't come until about 4 or 5 in the evening. 70. Here's the pitchers. A swing and a grounder to Soderholm at third. He's got it. Goes to second for one. The relay double play. Around the horn, starting with Soderholm to order the Johnson. And that retires the side. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. With the end of a half inning of play, it's Cleveland nothing. The White Sox coming to bat. Ralph has hit successfully in 39 of his last 41 ball games. He is hitting 304, eight homers and 41 RBIs. And it's interesting as you look at the White Sox lineup tonight. Of the nine hitters, five of them are hitting over 300. One of them over 290. Two of them over 282. And the lowest batting average in the lineup is a very respectable 277. And that's by the number nine hitter in the order, Jim Essien. Here's the first pitch to Gar, and it's a fastball for a strike on the inside part of the plate. Buddy Bell playing in at third. Frank Duffy's at short tonight, Dwayne Kuyper at second, and Andre Thornton at first with Fred Kendall doing the catching. Here's the one-strike pitch, high and inside a ball. On outfield of Bruce Bakke in left, Paul Dade in center, and Ron Pruitt in right field. Dade playing fairly shallow out in center field. Rick Manning, one of the outstanding young center fielders in baseball, has been out a while. Dade has gotten to play quite a bit and done a good job. Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball low, ball two. Plays primarily when left-handers are going. California wound up getting three runs in the second inning. Here's a fastball for a strike, and the count is even up to guard two and two. So the Angels lead Boston three to two. Brother Bobby Bonds has been hot. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Here's a swing and a grounder down to Bell. He had a weight on it. Throws across, and he got him. The ball was thrown low, but Thornton stretched out and got it, and there's one out. Bell sort of flinched at it if he was going to come in and charge that ball, but he elected to hold back, and he threw him out for the first out of the inning. And Alan Bannister, the batter. Allen hitting 303, three homers and 50 RBIs. Bobby Bonds has hit home runs in seven of his last eight games. Hit a home run in five consecutive games, then missed a game, and then has homered in his last two ball games. He has not homered as far as we know thus far tonight. Here's the pitch to Bannister, a fastball for a strike. Left-hander ready. Here's the one-strike pitch. And a breaking ball misses. Evens the count one and one. The only home run in that three-run inning for... Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. A good curveball. Caught the outside corner. A strike. One ball and two strikes. The only home run was Don Baylor for California. Here's the one-two pitch to Bannister. Low a ball inside. The outfield plays Bannister around to the right. They probably saw him go to the opposite field a lot in that last homestand, and especially last weekend against Kansas City. But he can pull the ball. Left-hander ready. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a high hopper down to the third baseman, Buddy Bell. He's got it and throws him out. Bell reminds me a lot of Kenny Reitz of the Cardinals. Seems like anything that gets near him, he gobbles up with very little effort. So Mr. Bell has two assists here tonight. So there's two up and two down, and George Orta, one of only two left-handers in the lineup tonight for the White Sox, is up. Ralph Gar being the other. Orta hitting 282, 11 homers, and 66 RBIs. Waits delivers, and it's outside of all. Rick Waits. Been primarily a reliever. His last start was over a month ago. Here's a pitch outside of all. His first man that he has fallen behind here. 6'395 pounder. Delivers. 
Here's a swing and a long fly ball. Left center field, way back. At the warning track, about a foot in front of it is Bakhti, and he hauled it in. That ball got off the bat quickly, but it seemed to hold up out there, and it just goes as a long out. In the inning, the White Sox are set down one, two, three. So we're at the end of one complete inning of play here in Chicago. Cleveland, nothing. The White Sox, nothing. Lauren Brown back at Comiskey Park as we go to the second. No score in the ballgame. It'll be Thornton, Pruitt, and Bakke. Mike from Homewood, Barb from Olympia Fields, Laura from Frankfurt, Linda from Chicago Heights are here. And they say they love Ziggy Zorowski. Who would? Dave Biederman, old classmate at St. Lawrence on the south side is here with Jack Keating and a group from the Green Shingle Restaurant in Harvey, along with Les Johnson. Hoping the White Sox can take three out of four in this homestand as the first pitch to Andre Thornton is a ball. Big right-handed hitter, formerly with the Cubs, hitting 255, 18 homers, and 38 RBIs. Looks at ball two inside. Kravick has fallen behind every hitter that he has faced here tonight. Fell behind the first three hitters in the first. He walked a man. Now he's behind Thornton here. 2-0. and oh. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch way inside that time. Just slung the ball. Three balls and no strikes. Outfield playing Thornton deep and around to the left. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Pass ball for a strike. He was taking all the way. Thornton last night was one for three. A credit for an RBI and a squeeze bunt. Here's a pitch. Here's a swing and a smash into the box seats. Between the White Sox dugout and the bullpen. And the count goes full, three and two. Somebody caught that foul ball. That was well hit. Being attended to. Here's the 3 2 pitchers, a swing and a fly ball to right field. Nordhagen coming in, coming in. He got it, but he dropped it. Nordhagen came running in, grabbed it, and then dropped it. It must have hit the heel of his mitt. And it's an error. As the Indians get their leadoff man on. So Thornton is on. And the batter is Ron Pruitt hitting 290. A homer and eight RBIs. Wants to bunt. Misses. Takes a strike. Left-hander ready. Thornton with the lead off of first to toss over there, and he's back in time. Soderholm playing in a toss over to first, and Thornton just did get back in. Well, that's probably the best pickoff move he's seen Kravick have all year. Left hand, you're ready. Here's the pitch to Pruitt, and he punted it foul. Right at the feet of the catcher, so he's in the hole. No balls and two strikes. Pruitt played in left field last night in right field tonight for the Indians. Nobody out. Two strikes in the batter. Runner not going. Here's the pitcher breaking ball way outside. Kansas City did not score in the first at Texas. Colburn going against Alexander. Here's a toss over to first and Thornton is back in time. Seattle leading Baltimore one to nothing at the end of four. The Red Sox just tied up California with a run in the bottom of the third. Here's the 2-1 pitch up high and inside of all, rather the 1-2 pitch, so it's even up now. Two balls and two strikes.
Barton with the lead off of first. There he goes, the 2-2 pitch, swinging the grounder to Soderholm. He's got it. Gets up, throws, he got him. Whale of a play by Soderholm as he saved the base hit going to his left. The runner was off, otherwise he would have had a chance for a double play, but the hit and run was on as Pruitt hits a shot that is gobbled up by Soderholm, who throws him out, but on the play, Thornton is down at second. So a runner at second and one out, and Bruce Bakke, the batter. Bakke came over from the California Angels with Sid Manji in the deal that sent Dave LaRoche to the Angels. Bakhti batting from the left side. First time he's been in this two-game set. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitcher. A swing and a one-hopper back to the mound. Kravik forces the runner back at second and then throws on to get Bakhti at first, and there's two out. Kravik looked Thornton back to second and then threw Bakhti out. That throw was a little low, but he got him. Time is called as Thornton. Goes down the baseline and smooths out the dirt. Now goes back to second as Paul Dade steps in. Dade hitting 298, two homers and 29 RBIs. Went two for five last night and drove in a run. The winning pitcher in that Philly game today was Jim Cotton. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch. A swing and a foul back to the screen. They had 30,267 in Philadelphia this afternoon. So the Phillies now three games out in front of the Idle Cubs. McBride hit a home run in that game. Kravick turns the throw to second. Nobody there. And Thornton dove in. And when he did, he didn't touch the bag. He dove back in and he reached out and the bag was still about three, four inches away. Left-hander ready. The one-strike pitch. Here's a swing and a shot, a base hit into right field. He hung a curveball. Here comes Thornton around to score and it's a one-to-nothing ball game. So an unearned run. On the drop fly ball. Brings Thornton home and the Indians jump out in front one to nothing. So Day jumped on a hanging curveball and laced it into right center field. So a runner at first, a run is in now with two out, and Fred Kendall, the batter, the catcher, hitting 272, three homers and 27 RBIs. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a foul. That Brown, who the Phillies beat today, was with the Indians last year, Jackie Brown. Run is in. Left-hander ready. And the pitch to Kendall. Breaking ball for a strike. Strike two. Andre Thornton now with Cleveland came over from Montreal in that trade for Brown. Left-hander ready. Here's the two-strike pitch of fastball. Misses low and outside a ball. They resume play at Toronto. No score at the end of two. The Twins against the Blue Jays. Here the Indians are out in front. One to nothing in the second. Remember our big payoff, and he'll be the third tonight. This is the final night. Here's the pitchers. A swing and a grounder to Bannister at short. He's got it. Flips to second for the force out on Dade, and that retires the side. However, a leadoff air came around to score, so the Indians come up with one run on one hit. There was one air and one man left 
on the base pass. So we're at the end of one and a half inning of play, going to the bottom of the second. Cleveland won, the White Sox nothing. Crowd back at Comiskey Park as we go to the bottom of the second. The Indians are out in front on an unearned run. One to nothing. It'll be Richie Zisk, Lamar Johnson, and Chet Lemon to face Rick Waits. In that California-Boston game, it's Hartzell going against Ossie. Hasse is 3-0. and And the Angels are out in front again, 4-3, to with the Red Sox batting in the bottom of the third. That Oakland-New York game, it's Torrey Alba going against Torres. Richie Zisk leads it off, hitting 303, 22 homers and 77 RBIs, and he takes the ball low. Rich Rennick will be giving away an $85 digital watch following the ball game tonight. Left-hander delivers. Here's a pitch. Here's a swing and a base hit to right field. So Richie Zisk punches a single to the opposite field, and the tying run is on here. And the batter, Lamar Johnson. Lamar hitting 301, 14 homers and 45 RBIs. The White Sox, in their seven games against the Indians as a club, have been hitting well. 317, six homers and 38 RBIs. One to nothing, Cleveland, if you just joined us. White Sox going into tonight's action, a game and a half in front of Minnesota, two and a half in front of Kansas City, and three in front of Texas, and the first pitch is a fastball for a strike. Waits out of the stretch, delivers, breaking ball, that's the ball. Lamar Johnson asked the umpire to take a look at it. He does and says it's all right. People from Zone 8, Lorraine's Lounge, are here tonight. As the White Sox conclude a four-game homestand. Here's the 1-1 pitch. High of all, 2-1. White Sox wanting to move on to Texas tomorrow night after a 3-1 homestand. But obviously, they've got to win tonight to make that so. We've got the pitching matchups for that Texas series. Left hand here ready. The 2-1 pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to center field, but Dade is there. Now he's got to come in a little bit. Slips, but is there and he's got it. And there's one out. The footing is not the greatest. We have had a tremendous amount of rain here. The month of August, as you're well aware, plus additional rain today. Had an inch and a half at the ballpark yesterday. Quite a bit again today. So there's one out at Chet Lemon, the batter, hitting 282, 16 homers, and 49 RBIs. At Texas tomorrow night, Francisco Barrios will face Doc Ellis. On Saturday night, Steve Stone against Burt Blylevin. And on Sunday night, Wilbur Wood against Nelson Bryles. Left-hander out of the stretch. And the first pitch to Chet. Swing and a smash, but foul. Down the left side into the box seats beyond the White Sox bullpen. Jumped on top of that pitch, but he was out in front of it as he pulls it foul. One to nothing Indians on an unearned run. A leadoff air, and the man came around to score. Waits ready. Zisk with the lead off of first. Here's the pitch. Inside a fastball. Evens up the count at one and one. Remember our big payoff inning will be the third. That will be the final big payoff inning of the year. I thank all you folks for sending your cards in. And congratulate those winners that were fortunate enough to have their card drawn. Here's a toss over to first, the runner back, and then fortunate enough to win cash and tickets to White Sox games. One ball and one strike to Lemon. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Took something off of it. Waits, primarily a relief pitcher, making his seventh start of the year. He's two and three in his previous six starts. 
who's three and one as a relief pitcher. Last start was against the Twins on July 31st. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on a curveball. He struck him out. So there's two out. That's the first strikeout for Lemon, and it's up to Wayne Nordhagen. Nordhagen in right field tonight. Came charging in. Apparently caught the ball, but it fell out of his mitt. And it got Thornton on an, on an air, and he advanced to second on an infield out and came home on a two-out single by Paul Day. Texas did not score in the first. They're in the second. No score. Left-hander ready. And the first pitch to Nordhagen. Inside of all. Wayne hitting 327 with eight RBIs. This is first full year in the major leagues. Zisk at first with two out now after that leadoff single. Here's the pitch to Nordhagen. Here's a swing and a grounder to the left side. Buddy Bell charges it. He's got it. Throws on the run, and he just did get him. Oh, what a fine third baseman he is. So the leadoff single is stranded at first. No runs. One hit. And one man left on. So we're at the end of two complete innings of play. Cleveland won. The White Sox nothing. Lauren Brown back at Comiskey Park as we go to the third. The Indians out in front, one to nothing. Minnesota has just scored three runs in the third. They lead Toronto three to nothing. Lyman Bostock cracked a two-run homer to account for two of the three runs. Kansas City did not score in the second at Texas. And the Yankees have added a run in New York in the fourth, and they lead Oakland four to nothing at the end of two. Frank Duffy, the shortstop, will lead it off. The number nine hitter in the order for Jeff Torborg, hitting 188, four homers, and 23 RBIs. First pitch, base hit down the left side. Might be two. Duffy making the turn at first. Here's the throw by Dar. They might have a play, but he slides in safely with a leadoff double just inside the bag on the first pitch by Kravick and the Indians get their leadoff man on for the second straight inning and he is in scoring position with a double and the batter is Dwayne Kuyper who bounced out to the pitcher his first time up So a runner at second with nobody out. And Kuiper, the batter, hitting from the left side, the co-captain of the Indians, bunts but foul, trying to move the runner over to get him in a sacrifice fly situation, but he's unable to do so, at least on that pitch. White Sox will be flying out of here to take on the Rangers tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday night, then on to New York against the Yankees Monday and Tuesday, and then up to Milwaukee next weekend, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader a week from Sunday. Here's the pitch, a punt to the right side, and it hit him. It hit him. It hit him. He's out. Or does he call it foul? Uh, he got a break. Here comes Bob Lemon to argue. There's no doubt in our mind up here that ball hit him. Yep, the umpire says it did. All right. Now, Paul... Jeff Torborg, the manager of the Indians, out to argue about it, but hit, hit him in fair territory and then went foul. And Kuiper is out. Here comes Rocky Colavito to argue about it. Marty Springstad, the umpire in chief, comes down to break it up. But going back to second is Guppy, and Kuiper is out. So Kuiper is out, interference. And the put-out goes to the catcher. Kuyper is still waiting for him to reverse his decision as Calavito and Torborg argue about it. But the minute it happened, Essie and the pitcher both, right away, yelled to the umpire. If it hit him in the batter's box, he is not out. But he was out of the batter's box, and the ball hit him. Happened to Claudel Washington in the last home stand for Texas in a similar play. So Kuiper is out of there. And there's one out, and Buddy Bell will be the batter. Pitch 
Pittsburgh has now extended their lead over the Mets to 7 to nothing. So if the Pirates win, they'll be remain three and a half out with the Cubs three out and the Phillies in first. Left-hander ready. Here's the first pitch to Bell. Way outside a ball. Bell walked his last time and only time up today. Bell went two for five out here last night with a pair of doubles. A runner at second with one out. We're in the third. Indians out in front, one to nothing. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Inside a ball, 2-0. and oh. Pirates extended that 3 nothing lead to 7 to nothing as they came up with four in the bottom of the fifth. Kravik struggling here with Bell. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Here's a swing and a long fly ball. Look out, way back. It is gone. A home run. And it's a 3 to nothing ball game. Looked like he got a curveball on the inside part of the plate that he golfed. An uppercut swing. And Bell has hit his ninth home run of the year, and the Indians lead it 3-0 here. So Kravick has given up as many runs here in a two and a third innings as he did in eight innings in his last outing against Kansas City. So it's a three to nothing ball game now. The Indians jumped out in front early last night and they swing and a foul out of play. In fact, the Indians got one in the first and two in the third last night. Here tonight, they got one in the second and two in the third here tonight. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch, a curveball for a strike. Steve Stone is throwing down to the bullpen, but that's just on his own. He'll be pitching Saturday night in Texas. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch, and it's high. Ball one. So a two-run homer by Buddy Bell, giving the Indians a three-nothing lead. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a shot right down to Soderholm at third. He's got it, and he throws him out for the second out of the inning. Well, that's what happens. You fall behind those hitters. He fell behind Bell, 2-0. It's either a curveball or a slider that he melded it out of here. That ball broke in the inside part of the plate. And he jerked it into the left field seats. So Andre Thornton, the batter, he got on in an air his first time up and came around to score. The first Cleveland run swings and fouls one off. Strike one. Big payoff inning coming in the bottom of the third out of the plate. He jerked it into the left field seats. So Andre Thornton, the batter, he got on in an air his first time up and came around to score. The first Cleveland run swings and fouls one off. Strike one. Big payoff inning coming in the bottom of the third, our final payoff inning of the year. Hope we can give a lot of money away. With two runs on two hits, the big blow, a two-run homer by Buddy Bell, and nobody left on. So we go to the bottom of the third. It's Cleveland three, the White Sox nothing. Move to the bottom half of the third inning, the White Sox trailing three to nothing, and this is our final big payoff inning of the year. As Eric Soderholm leads it off, he'll be followed by Jim Essien and Ralph Gar. And Eric is batting for Eileen Clark of 59-52 South Parkside in Chicago. A single is worth $50, $100 for a double, $200 for a triple, $500 for a homer, $25 for a walk, safe on an air or hit by a pitch. All entrants will win at least two tickets to a White Sox game. First pitch, a swing and a shot into right field, but coming over and grabbing it, waist high as Pruitt. Soderholm got good wood on the ball going to the opposite field, but he is out. And there's one down, and Eileen Clark of Chicago, Illinois, of 59-52 South Parkside, wins two tickets to a White Sox game. And the next batter is Jim Essien. Essien batting for Charles Shalito of 10.05. Reminds us they didn't see a home run and get to see the scoreboard go off. Danny Hozak, our engineer with relatives out here tonight, wanting to see it go off. And we'd like to give some money away here in this inning via a home run. How about a couple of hits and then a home run? That'd do it both. Tie it up as well as give some loot away. California-Boston. 4-3, to California into 4. 
Here's the first pitch to Essien, and it's low a ball. Minnesota leads Toronto 3 to nothing at the end of three innings of play. Fans start to talk it up. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch inside of all 2-0. Oh. Kansas City, Texas, no score in the bottom of the third. Rick Waits on the mound delivers the 2-0 oh pitch, called strike in the outside corner. Waits, as we mentioned, 6'395 pounder, all-round high school athlete in Atlanta, Georgia, in baseball, basketball, football, and track. He once pitched back-to-back no-hitters in high school. 2-1 pitch, cut on and foul, back to the screen, and the count is even 2-2. Two and two. Came over to the Indians with Jim Bibby and Jackie Brown and Cash by the Texas Rangers two years ago for Gaylord Perry. Two-two the count to Essien, who's batting for Charles Shalito of Dyer, Indiana. Here's the pitcher, who's a swing and a grounder down to Bell at third. He's got it, and he throws him out without any effort. That is the fourth assist already by Bell tonight. So there's two out, and we may have our final batter. And here's an oddity. I don't know if this is a mistake or what, but... Our next entrant is Mark Shalito of 123-17 Carpenter in Cal Park, Illinois. We got two Shalitos, one from Dyer, Indiana, and one from Cal Park, Illinois, apparently. Here's the first pitch to Ralph Gar, and it's inside the ball. Ralph grounded out to third, his first time up. All we can do is read the names that are on here. Here's the pitch inside the ball, 2-0. Oh. So it looks like we've got... An unusual situation with the same last name, and Shalito is not the most common name in the world, certainly not like Brown, Jones, Smith. Here's a pitch down the pipe, a strike that he takes. Two balls and a strike. Nobody on, and two out. The Indians out in front, three to nothing. They jumped out in front, three to nothing last night. Went on to win it, six to one. Here's the pitch. Low a ball, three and one. Alan Bannister in the on-deck circle. Buddy Bell is playing in near the edge of the grass at third. Waits goes into the windup. The 3-1 pitch. Inside a ball, he walked him. So, if the name is correct, Mark Shalito of 123 South 17, or 123 17 Carpenter in Cal Park, Illinois, has just won $25. And now this is our final entrant of the year, Fred Stevens of 5312 Main Street in Downers Grove, Illinois, is our final entrant of the year as Alan Bannister steps in. Alan grounded out to third his first time up. Left-hander out of the stretch delivers, and it's a strike in the inside corner. Alan drove in the only run last night in the third after Gar doubled with nobody on and two out, Allen singled him home. And that was all the White Sox could do against Garland. Left-hander running. Tosses over to first. Baltimore has just tied up Seattle 1-1 at the end of six. Singleton with his 17th home run of the year. Pittsburgh, Dave Parker got a base hit tonight. He has extended his hitting streak to 22 straight games, the longest this year in the National League. Here's another toss to first, the runner back. The longest in the American League, I believe, is Pat Kelly's at Baltimore with 19. One strike on the batter. Runner at first and two out. Indians leading three to nothing here in the third. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a grounder to second. Kuiper's got it. Flips to the shortstop for the force out on Gar, and the White Sox are retired here in the third. So Fred Stevens of Downers Grove, Illinois, wins two tickets to a Sox game of his choice. So that's it. Mark Shalito of Cal Park, Illinois, wins $25, while Fred Stevens of Downers Grove, Charles Shalito of Dyer, Indiana, we'll check that out. We may have made a mistake on those names. And Eileen Clark of Chicago wins tickets to a White Sox game. So we're at the end of three. I'm Lauren Brown. Harry Carey will be along with the play-by-play in just a minute as it's Cleveland out in front here by a score of three to nothing. Hey, Harry Carey, back to the ballpark. We're going to the top of the fourth inning. The Indians are leading three to nothing. Rob Pruitt's going to lead it off. The first pitch to him is inside. One ball, no strikes. Now a curveball in there, a beauty, a strike call. Pruitt hitting 290. One homer, 18 RBI. 
Indians out in front, the pitch. Fastball in or a strike call. Two strikes in the ball. Kansas City and Texas no score in the third. Now the delivery, here it is. Bounces in front of the plate. Almost hit him. Well, I see Kelly, like an alley, is at it again. Did it ever occur to him that if people misinterpret what he writes, it might be because of the sophomoreish way he writes it? Two balls, two strikes. There's the pitch swung off, fly ball, left field, gonna drop, base hit. This is not Kravik's night so far. Pruitt loops the single to left. Jim Perman is here. With a group. First base, nobody out. Bruce Bakhti, the batter. Now, Pruitt a lead. The pitch by Kravik. He tries to bunt and he bunts a foul. One strike and nothing. Dade will be up there next. Steve Bengala from Oak Forest here. One strike and nothing. Crowd very quiet, nothing has happened. Pitch to Bakke, he bunts right in front of the plate. The play to second base. Save! Everybody is safe. Bannister could not hold the ball. Boy, Estian made a fine effort. And it looked as if his throw might get him. It arrived, though, just about the time the runner did. And he slid into the ball, knocking it away. It's a sacrifice and a fielder's choice. Runners are at first and second, nobody out. Here's Paul Dade. He singled in their first run. Boy, now they threaten to break it wide open. Here's the pitch, Dade is going to bunny pops it in the air. They let it drop, throw to third for one, throw to second for two. Hey, that's the way to use your head. Kravick, Ben Kravick deliberately let the punt drop. Picked it up, threw to second, slider home. Threw to slider home at third, who then relayed it to Bannister at second. So Dade, trying to sacrifice, into a double play. Threw it, the runner at second was out from Kravik to Satterholm, and Bakke, the runner at first, was out from Satterholm to Bannister. If you're scoring, that double play goes one, five, six. Crowd's still buzzing over it. Kravik had but obviously made up his mind in advance as to what he was going to do if the ball was put in the air to him. Marty Kerwin with a group from Hobart, Indiana. Here's Kendall with a runner at first, two out. Three to nothing in favor of the Indians. Here's the pitch. Fastball a little bit low. Well, let's see if a play like that bring the White Sox back. They're trailing three to nothing. A real smart play by Ken Craving. Now to throw over to first the runner back. Larry Rafferty is here celebrating his 10th birthday. So is Lisa, Liza, O'Hara. One ball, no strikes, a throw over the first, the runner back. Now the side. One ball, no strikes. The pitch. High. Ball two. 
Bill Sajak is here with a group. And the Starmy Bull on the near our side. Enjoying cold strolls. Two balls, no strike. There goes the runner. The pitch swung on a high fly ball, center field. Lemon coming in. He's there. Makes the catch to retire the foul. No run. One hit. No errors. And one man left. We go down to the bottom of the fourth, the Indians three, the White Sox nothing. Hi, everybody. This is Jimmy Pearsall for Turtle Lumber and Garage Builders. They're one of the fastest growing garage builders in the Midwest. And there's a reason for this growth. They build quality garages for reasonable prices. Turtle garages are professionally designed and built with only the best materials, finest craftsmen, and thorough attention to details. And unlike other garage builders, the Turtle will come to your home at no charge to give you a free estimate on your personally designed, custom-built garage. Call Turtle at 546-6500 for a free estimate. Or stop by one of their five convenient Chicagoland locations and see full-size models on display. Call 546-6500 for your nearest location or free estimate. The Turtle is in the yellow pages under Garage Builders. Turtle Lumber and Garage Builders, a trusted name in quality garages. Call 546-6500. That's Turtle Lumber and Garage Builders, 546-6500. Hi, Nancy Fouts. Getting the crowd going here. The White Sox are trailing.
Powell tipped it. And the count evens up. Our regards to Paul Peterson and Dan Lepersky. A couple of White Sox fans who are convalescing at McNeil Hospital in Berwyn. A runner at first, two balls, two strikes. Down a stretch. Here's the pitch. Stop, Taylor. This goes down swinging. One out, here's Lamar Johnson. The Knights of Columbus from Griffith, Indiana are here tonight. Lamar Johnson cried out his first time. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch. High and outside. The outfield plays Lamar, bunched towards center and very deep. One man out, Chet Lemon will be next. Now the pitch. Swung anyway. A ball and a strike. Texas has taken a two to nothing lead over Kansas City in the fourth. Seattle and Baltimore, they're tied 1-1 in the eighth. California out in front of Boston, 4-3 in the fifth. The Yankees have a 3 to nothing lead over Oakland in the seventh. <coughs> Minnesota leads Toronto, 3 to nothing. A ball and a strike. Out of stretch. Rick Waits pitch, here it is. High pump foul, out of play. Into the stand, the souvenir. Two strikes and a ball. Lamar Johnson batting 301. Bob Mosek and his pals celebrating his bachelor party here. His bride to be is a Cubs fan and he's a Sox fan. Two strikes and a ball. The bet struck him out of the curveball. Wayne Garland, who had won eight and lost 13, beat the White Sox on five hits, six to one last night. Rick Waits, who's won five and lost four with an earned run average of better than five runs per game, is shutting, shutting them out on two hits so far tonight. Chet Lemon, he fanned his first time up. Down the stretch, the pitch on the way, fastball is low. One ball, no strike. Now it is quieted down now. The pitch. Long and he missed. Boy, we're all going for that home run. Martin Millen. Millen. Celebrating his 12th birthday today. A ball and a strike. Two men are out. A runner at first. Rick Waits is set. Throw to first base the runner back. Ball, one strike. A pitch to Chet Lemon. Here it is. Inside, he jammed it with a fastball. Jim Keegan is here with his daughters. And Chris Harvey celebrating his 15th birthday here tonight. Two balls and a strike. A runner at first, two men out. Here's the pitch. Curve of beauty right in there, a strike call. 
Two balls, two strikes. Minnesota is winning tonight. Now the signal given. The pitch on the way. Foul is back. Texas leads Kansas City 2 to nothing. Minnesota over Toronto 3 to nothing. The White Sox could drop to within two games of Texas. Two balls, two strikes, but this team's got a long way to go. There's a pitch, and it's a little bit outside. Ball three, a good curveball, barely missed. Tomorrow night, we'll be with you at 7.15 from Texas. Francisco Barrios pitching against Doc Ellis. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Star came out, a curveball. So Rick Waite struck out the side after... Orta started off with a punt single. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of four, it's Cleveland three, the White Sox nothing. I had the fifth. Harry Carey back in the ballpark. We're going into the top of the fifth. Boy, I said of these Indians. Really made the White Sox look bad these last two nights. Marion Tweet Simon in Davenport, Iowa. Here we go with Frank Duffy trying to bump the first pitch, and he bumps it far. Duffy let off with a double in the third. One strike and nothing. Right hand hitter waiting. Ball game in the fifth. Three to nothing in favor of Cleveland. Buddy Bell hit a two-run homer. Now the pitch to Duffy is a curve over the outside corner for a strike call. Philadelphia beat Montreal 10-5 to today. And Pittsburgh over the Mets 9-1. In the bottom of the eighth. Now the wind, the pitch, swung on, popped up on the infield. Or to back, under the ball, waiting, and he makes the catch. One out. There's Dwayne Kuyper from Racine, Wisconsin. Fine second baseman hitting 280. No homers, 39 runs batted in. One man out, nobody on the pit. Curve is a little bit outside. Her field. The great Sox fan who sits right behind their dugout. Here with a big group tonight. Here's a pitch ground ball. Short stop. Hey! And Bannister kicks it for an error. Bannister failed to come up with Kuiper's ground ball. Here's Buddy Bell. He walked in the first... And he homered with a man on in the third. On the stretch, the pitch. A bouncing ball. Lamar Johnson's got it over to second for one. No play at first as Kuiper took Alan Bannis to run out of the play. Bell, trying to hit behind the runner, forces Kuiper from Lamar Johnson to Bannister. Two and a gone. Jim Perriman here. Here's Bill Mel. Runner at first base, two and out. Right hand hitter with power. 
Now the pitch. Curve in there is strike off. No, no homers this year. Driven in 12 runs. The pitch is a curve inside. A ball with a strike. It swung on and popped up. That should be easy. Lamar Johnson under the ball. He's got it to retire the side. No run, no hits, one air, and one left. There are five Gallio's brothers on the outfit. Harry Carey and Jimmy Tersaw are going into the bottom of the fifth. Three to nothing in favor of Cleveland. Rick Waits fires a fastball over the outside corner for a strike call. One strike or nothing. Wayne Nardig in the hitter. Now the left-hander fires. Curve strike two call. Jimmy Mas Machinist who runs the Chicago election board here with a big group. Two strikes and nothing on Nardhagen, the pitch. Low curve into the dirt. Two strikes and a ball. Boy, these Indians have just tied the White Sox in the net. The pitch swung and he fouled him. Two strikes and a ball. We got only one run last night and no run so far tonight. There is the first time in the first series that I've seen our hitters pressing. They are really pressing because this guy is not overpowering. I like to see him just go for the base hits. Two strikes and a ball the pitch. Bangs and he fouls it in the upper deck. Senior citizens, a group of party from Golden Age Chateau and Markham, Illinois are here. Two strikes and a ball. Nard Hagen waiting. Here's the bench. A bouncing ball that ought to be easy. Kuiper in fast. Throws to the out. Said that these fellas have a pretty good looking ball club. There are 15 games under 500 in the Eastern Division. One out. Here's Soderholm. He lined the ball hard to the right fielder his first time up. There's the pitch a little bit outside. Molly Kramer here with the gang from White's Tavern in Naperville with that throws beer on tap. One ball, no strikes, the pitch. Swung on, ground ball. Third base from Buddy Bell, the pack. In time for the up. Two gone, here's Hessian. Boy, this is going to get a little serious. It's early, though. Nobody hitting this guy at all. Two men are gone. Ball game in the fifth. Essien waiting. Into the wind of the pitch. Here it is. High fly ball. Right field easy out. Pruitt is there. And he makes the catch to retire the side. One, two, three. Nothing across. At the end of five. Cleveland three. White Sox nothing. Here's Tom T. Hall. Terry and Jimmy Pearsall. We go now into the top of the sixth inning. The score is still three to nothing. In favor of the Indians and Andre Clark is going to be leading it off. Clark was saved on an air by Nard Hagen for second rolled out in the third. They've had four hits. The White Sox have had two. One of their hits was a two-run homer by Buddy Bell.
Ball game in the sixth. Kansas City scored a run. Texas now leads two to one. Here's the wind up the pitch. Barton takes it in there for a strike call. Judge Maravitz watching the ball game here tonight. Now the delivery by Kravick. Curve in there a beauty strike two call. Two strikes and nothing. Score three to nothing in favor of Cleveland. Barton has hit 18 homers this year. Batting 255. Two strikes and nothing. Now the wind, the pitch. Struck him out on three pitches. He had given up on a fastball and it tailed back over the plate. He thought it was going to be inside. California has taken a 6-3 lead over the Red Sox. The Sarfinskis celebrating their fourth wedding anniversary. They're from Derwin. There's the pitch in there, a strike call from Pruitt. Pruitt is one out of two tonight. Now the pitch, curve, low and inside. Pruitt, a catcher, and playing right field, he can't throw. He's not much of an outfielder, but we don't hit the ball out there. <laughs> so we can't <laughs> take not. advantage of it. One ball, one strike. There's a let up pitch in the first strike call. Two strikes and a ball. One out. We're in the sixth. The pitch. Curve, smash, foul. Outside third. Joe Nostic. Coaching over there. Got out of the way. Ball game in the top of the sixth. Time to make a move for the White Sox. Pittsburgh's going to win easily. The Phillies won. Cubs are idle today. Here's the pitch to Pruitt. Started the swing, held up. Two balls, two strikes. The Phillies now lead the Cubs by three games. And they stay three and a half ahead of Pittsburgh. Here's the pitch, swung, ground ball. Bannister to his left has it. There's the peg for the out. Bannister, a nice play to his left. Two and up, two and down. He certainly makes the plays to his left look easy, Harry, even if they're tough. There's something about it. When he gets the plays to his right, he'll be a complete shortstop. Here's Bruce Bakhti. Left-hand hitter. Group of fans here from Beecher, Illinois. Two and out. Score three to nothing. Favor the Indian. There's a curveball low and outside. The Hiawatha Park Museum Indian. Here at the ballpark tonight. Now the pit. Swung and he missed. That evens it up in a ball and a strike. Two men are out. We're in the sixth. Texas. Leading Kansas City 2-1. to one. And Minnesota over Toronto 4-1 to one at the end of five. One ball, one strike. Two men are out. Bruce Bakhti the hitter. Now Kravik spit. Swung on. Line drive. Right field going back. Nardhagen, it's over his head. Here's the runner holding up at first base. Nardhagen fires the ball back into the infield. Got a strong arm got the best arm in our outfield. He can really hum it. He hung a side arm fastball and Bakhti fell away from it, just ripped it over Nordhagen's head. Well, here's Dade. He drove it around with a base hit in a second. Runner at first, two men out. All game in the sixth. Cleveland leading three to nothing. Dade wears a double O on his back. There's a strike, a good fastball. One strike to nothing. The 
Downfield around towards the left. Stay the right hand hitter to pitch. Curveball a little bit low. Pittsburgh defeated the Mets 9-1. Jones the winner 3-4. and four. Zachary the loser 5-12. 9,000 at New York. No, at Pittsburgh. At Pittsburgh? One ball, one strike. Now the pitcher it is. Strong and he missed and he really went around. Trying to get that ball a ride. And have a giant open air flea market here at the ballpark Sunday afternoon. You might want to attend, you might pick up some bargains. Here's the pitch. Swung and he struck him out. So it is no run, one hit, no left, one left. We go down to the bottom of the sixth. Cleveland three, the White Sox nothing. Two Chicago. <laughs> Harry Carey back in the ballpark. As I mentioned, Alan Dixon, the Secretary of State here in the state of Illinois, watching the ball game here tonight. Incidentally, Alan, I think you have a group here from your Lombard facility also. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Harry, and I hope that the Lombard facility and myself get to see the White Sox win today. Well, we're going to have to uh, stir ourselves. Uh, Cleveland's out in front three to nothing, but a long way to go. That's right. But I think we can win this ball game. I feel very optimistic. Well, you really look good. Thank you. You look good, too, Harry. And uh, I haven't seen you on a plane going between Chicago and St. Louis for quite a while now. Well, I really haven't, but I'm really thrilled about the White Sox, and I know they're going to win the uh, pennant in the World Series, and you and I will celebrate that together. Very good. Nice of you to stop by. Good to see you, Harry. Thank you very much. Alan Dixon, Secretary of State, watching the ball game. Here's Gar to lead it off. First pitch is in the first strike call. Now the count evens up a ball and a strike. Gar trying to get something going. We want to hit the starting chance. There's a strike call. Two strikes and a ball. Gar bounced out his first time, walked his next time. Now the wind, two strikes and a ball, the pitch low. That evens it up, two balls, two strikes. Louis on here. This evening, now the line, the pitch. Swings and he fouls it out of play to the upper deck. Texas just came up with two more runs against Kansas City in the fifth. They lead four to one. Oh, it'd be great to pull this one out. 2-2 two, two pitch. Miles he ball to the short stops left. He's got it and throws in time. One away. We just can't do a thing. Boy, oh boy, you look at that Garland last night. He had an earn run average of 4.35. He had one eight, lost 13. And he pitched a masterpiece. He allowed one run. You look at Rick Waits with an earn run average of 5.18. He's won five, lost four. And he looks like he belongs in the Hall of Fame. One out, here's Bannister. Here's the pitch, swung and foul back and out of play. One strike and nothing. Louis on his family and friends. And boys of the Zahn Drug Company all on him. One man out. Pitch on the way. Swung and he missed strike two. Seattle continues to be tough. Stanton just did his 18th home run in the eighth with one on, and they lead going into the ninth. Baltimore three to one. Two strikes or nothing on Allen Bannister. Kerr barely missed outside ball one. One man out. Nobody on base. We're in the sixth. Now the pitch. Kerr a little bit inside, and now the count is evened up. California leading the Red Sox 6-3 in the seventh. Yankees shut out Oakland. Now the wind of the pitch swung on line. One hopper right to the second base. Kuiper flips over the first to the out. The White Sox have had two hits. One was a bunt by Orta. The other was a ground single to right by Ziss. Two men off. Here's the note. I would like to announce.
Jeff's engagement with Sue LaBarge to Jeff Teamstra, which occurred during the third inning tonight. That was a dull inning, wasn't it? Two men are out. Two men are out. Nobody on, and Hort to the bat. Rick Waits goes into the line to pitch. Curve of beauty and order sharp up against the bunt. A ball and a strike. Now the delivery. A little tap to the third base when the pitcher cuts it off. Throws well. And Orca will be saved. He pulled the first baseman off the bag. That would have been an easy play for Buddy Bell. It certainly would, Harry. He was right there, but the pitcher grabbed it. And when he wheeled and turned, he couldn't get anything on it. He just threw it straight up in the air. Here's what she's this now. He singles to start the second. Now, Jordan went off with a button hit to the fourth. He stuck out. Oh, for a long one. And up go those bullseyes in left field. One big side. Please deposit the ball here. Two men are out. Pitch by Rick Waits. Here it is. Curve a little bit high. Ball one. Oh, for a long one. And up go those bullseyes in left field. One big side. Please deposit the ball here. Two men are out. Pitch by Rick Waits. Here it is. Curve a little bit high. Ball one. So Mark Johnson will be up there next. Throw one just a little lower that high. And we'll have a couple... One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch. A little tap foul off to the left, and the count is even a ball and a strike. Two men are gone, runner at first, bottom of the sixth. Now the right hand hitter digging in. Minnesota batting in the sixth leads Toronto four to one. The crowd. Alive. Here's the bet. Swung and he missed it. Boy, he missed that one a foot. Does this guy throw a screwball? I don't think so. He may turn a fastball over a little bit. If he had a screwball, I don't think he'd have an ERA of 5.18. He must have turned that pitch over because this really missed in a mile. Two strikes and a ball. Now the pitch, here it is. He struck him out again. So, it's no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. This is Harry Carey going back over to the television booth with a score here. Cleveland three, White Sox nothing. Dealer and take a look at the picture you get on Zenith Chroma Color 2 with EVG, electronic video guard tuning. EVG helps keep the Zenith picture sharp and clear for years, not just when the TV sets new. With EVG, you get direct positive signal reception every time you select a channel. Zenith electronic video guard tuning is featured on selected models in every Zenith screen size category. See your Zenith dealer and ask for a demonstration. We've got something for everyone, and we've got something for you. Come on by and join the fun And we got something for you Hi everybody, Jimmy Pearsall along with Lauren Brown Ken Kravick has pitched six innings He's given up three runs on five hits Gave up a run in the second inning An error by Nordhagen when he grabbed the line drive by Andre Thornton and Then a single by Dade Scored Thornton for a run And then a home run after Duffy doubled down the left field line in the third inning by Buddy Bell, gave him two more runs. It was Bell's ninth home run. And we stand here now, three to nothing, in the top of the seventh. Kendall will lead. Hitting 272 with three home runs and 29 RBIs. 
Kravick, who doesn't have his good stuff tonight, still has pitched well enough to win. First pitch of Swan, ground ball third base, one big hop to Soderholm, and he throws him out easy by about 35 steps. With that slow infield, infielders just have to wait and take their time, and most of the plays are easy for them. And a lot of ground balls at third base the last two nights. Good plays tonight by Soderholm and Bell. An unusual double play in the fourth inning. The runners on first and second and nobody out. Dade popped up in front. First pitch to Frank Duffy. There's a strike on the outside corner, a breaking ball. Kravick let it fall, fired to third for one out for the force. Pitch at the inside corner, strike two. And then Soderholm fired over to second base to Bannister, who was covering for the double play. Smart thinking on the part of Kravick. And they get out of the inning. Frank Duffy hitting 184 with four home runs and 23 RBIs. Stands deep in the box. Breaking ball way inside. Essien has to dig it out. The count goes to one ball and two strikes. Over towards left center is Lemon. Infield playing in the pull. Breaking ball swung on, hit foul down the third baseline by Joe Nostic, the third base coach, and one of the fans reaches over the railing and gets it. Gar now is over by the line. Duffy in the second inning with Soderholm in looking for a bunt, hit a ball by him for a double that slowed up down the line. And then he popped the second. The one-two pitch. Swung on and fall off right behind the plate. The count remains at one and two. Seattle batting in the top of the ninth lead Baltimore three to one. Kansas City and Texas. Texas leads four to one. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the right side again and out of play. And hit the up deck and went down in the lower stands and they booted it. Got back on the field. Baltimore trails Boston by two and a half games. Four games in a loss column. The Yankees defeated Oakland today. Three to nothing. Change up inside, ball two. Oakland looks like they have a chance to lose 100 games this year. That club has just run out of ball players. The 2-2. Two -two. Kravick taking his time and Duffy steps out. Joe Nostic coaching at third. Rocky Calavito down at first. Change up, he turns over high and outside. The count goes to three and two. That pitch looked like that change up he tries to throw that moves. California leading Boston, top of the seventh, six to three at Boston. Kravick ready, the left-hander kicks and delivers. Fastball, looked like he swung at it, but a fire at first. Springstad says no, that's based on balls number two. Dwayne Kuyper, the hitter. Kuyper was on an error last, was on an error last time up. He tried to bunt his way on in the third and hit the ball in fair territory. He hit him in the back and he was out. Kravick now looks, there goes a the runner. Pitch swung on and fouled off. Kuyper chased a bad pitch that was down and in. Frank Duffy was off on the pitch. Pittsburgh defeated the Mets tonight, 9-1. To Philadelphia also won 10-5. to five. Houston defeated San Francisco 7-5 to five as Kuiper looks down for a sign from Gnostic. One out. Cleveland leading 3 to nothing. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Soderholm in looking for a bunt. At the belt now is Kravick. Kicks and delivers. Breaking ball right down the middle and a good pitch. Kuiper backed out of there and that pitch just came across the plate for a strike. Kuiper hitting a 280. No home runs and 39 RBIs. He's a slap hitter. He can run. There's a throw over there. Duffy back easily. Playing first base tonight, Lamar Johnson. Orta back in the lineup at second. Bannister at short. Soderholm at third. Another throw over there again. 
Big hole in right center field. Nordhagen playing right field in place of this, who's a designated hitter tonight. The two-strike pitch. Breaking ball just missed. He ducked away from it. And it almost got the inside corner. So Kuiper having trouble with that curveball now. The count runs to one and two on him. Favick ready. Duffy with a lead. Pitch out. He wasn't going. The count now is two and two. Estine had a notion he was running. The call for a pitch out. Minnesota leads Toronto 4-1 to one, the top of the seventh inning at Toronto. Breaking ball just missed inside again, brushing him back. And the count now is 3-2 and two on Dwayne Kuyper, Indian second baseman. 0 for 3 tonight. Gone on an error in the fifth inning by Bannister. See the runners going. Play the throws over there. Favick looks over at first base, delivery, there goes the runner, pitch one, ground ball off towards short, Bannister boots it a little bit, now he gets it and fires over to first. It came out of his glove and then dropped back in again, he was going to tag the bag, he was over near second, but he couldn't because the runner had beat him to the bag and he took the first for the out. And now Duffy's in scoring position here in the seventh inning with two outs. Buddy Bell, who's played a well of a series, he walked his first time up hit his ninth home run and drove in his 51st or 52nd RBI in the third inning. He's one for two. Hitting at 291. Gus Bell, his dad, played for Cleveland for many years, center fielder. Estia now off the mound to talk to Kravick. Bill Melton's on deck, the designated hitter. The White Sox leave for Texas tomorrow morning play three games, all be televised. It'll be on radio at 7.30. First pitch the fastball in the outside corner. On WMAQ radio, 67 on your dial. Got some letters from Kentucky today. Want to say thank you very much. Appreciate your enjoying our broadcast. Breaking ball outside. That pitch is a change of speed breaking ball. The count goes to one ball and one strike. Buddy Bell chokes up a little bit on the bat. Stands even with the base at home plate. A 1-1 pitch. Swung on, line to center field. In comes Lemon. It's right in his track and he takes it. Boy, that ball was really hit hard. Line to center field. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left. And the score after six and a half innings of play. on their minds, cops on their tails, and the game of their lives at stake. Your bad news bears and breaking training from Paramount rated PG parental guidance suggested. See Paramount Pitchers Breaking Training now playing at selected theaters. Hi everybody, Jimmy Pearsall back at Comiskey Park. Lamar Johnson starts things off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Cleveland leads three to nothing. First pitch to him. Fastball at the inside corner for a strike, and Lamar didn't like it a bit. Come on, big man, get a bloop single somewhere. We got to get going here. We got to play a little bit first and third. One strike pitch. Ground ball off the left side. And we have not hit weights too hard here tonight. He's been throwing fastballs in, breaking balls on the outside part of the plate. He has struck out five and walked one. 
His record this year is 5-4 and four with an ERA of 5.18. Two strikes on Johnson. The left-hander kicks and delivers. Fastball just misses outside for a ball. Weight stands 6'3", he weighs 195 pounds. He's 25 years old. The one-two pitch. Fastball low. Two balls and two strikes. Wait came over to Cleveland from the Rangers along with Bibby and Brown for Perry. Ryan shot right at the second baseman on one hop. Kuiper up with it. He had to back up about four or five steps, and that ball was hit hard, but right at him. That time, Lamar waited for that breaking ball and went the other way with it. Chet Lemon has struck out in the second and struck out again in the fourth. He's 0 for 2. Hitting 282 with 16 home runs and 49 RBIs. I'd like to see Chet Buckman here at infield. First pitch to Lemon. Breaking ball. Hits the inside corner for a strike, and he didn't like it either. El Tazio, the umpire behind the plate. Evans down at third, Barnett at second, Springstead at first. Lemon ready, creeping in his bell at third. Breaking ball gets the outside corner for a strike. So he hits the inside corner with the first pitch, changes speed on a breaking ball, hits the outside corner. Now Bell is deep over by the line as Lemon steps out. In left field, Bakhti is deep. Dade in center field. They straight away a little bit towards left center. Big hole in right. A two-strike pitch. Swung on line down the right field line. It's curving foul. You know, he just reached out and just flicked that ball. It was a line shot. Lemon with tremendous power. He's getting better all the time, but sometimes when he starts hitting home runs, he forgets about going the other way. But let me tell you, he's got a lot of talent. Stands deep in the box. Crouches a little bit. Holds the bat up over his head. Waits ready. The left-hander delivers a breaking ball. Swung on. High hopper out towards third. On the run as Bell makes a fine play. And you just got to believe that he had to run about 10 or 12 steps to get it and get it on the short hop and flip him out. That infield surface is really slow, especially the grass part. It just sucks that ball up, but it loses its speed. Wayne Northhagen. Hitter. Washington hit a home run as eighth for Texas in the fifth with one on. They lead that ball game. Four to three now as Kansas City's come up with a run in the seventh. The pitch jammed him. Ground ball out towards second. He was trying to go to right field, but he got jammed with a fastball. So an easy inning for Waits. No hits, no runs, and no errors. And the score after seven innings of play, the Cleveland Indians three, the Chicago White Sox nothing. Hi again, everybody. Long Brown, along with Jimmy Pearsall, back at Comiskey Park as we go to the eighth inning. The White Sox, in 16 innings in this series, have pounded a threat only once, and that was in the ninth inning last night. As Cleveland leads it here, three to nothing. Bill Melk will lead it off. A right-hander, Kirkwood, working out of the White Sox bullpen. Well, Chris Knapp went down to the minor leagues, and often it happens when you go down after being in the big leagues a while. The Indianapolis got two runs off in the first inning, but Iowa's come back with three in the fourth. They lead Indianapolis three to two with Knapp pitching. Melton swings and fouls one back. Evens the count one and one. Mike Torres with a two-hit shutout tonight as the Yankees defeated Oakland. Their third win in a row, and the Oakland A's now have lost, if you believe it, 13 in a row, 21 of their last 23 games. They got a chance to lose 100. Seattle leads Baltimore at 3-1 to one at the end of 8. Here's the pitch to Melton, and it's inside ball 2. Melton 0-3 for three tonight. You know, good friends, Steve Stone and Ken Kravick, and watching him pitch tonight, he's pitching a lot like Steve when he's not, he doesn't have his good stuff. There's a swing and a grounder foul outside the bag at third. Evens the count 2-2. Two and two. The Indians got an unearned run in the second inning and then a two-run homer on a 2-0 pitch by Buddy Bell in the third. And that has been all the scoring tonight. White Sox have had but three hits, only one of them out of the infield. Mr. Waits is pitching like Cy Young Jr. tonight. 
White Sox were outpitched last night. Have been outpitched thus far tonight. Here's a breaking ball outside of all. I think Valpazio, the umpire behind the plate, has done a good job. He's had a lot of breaking balls to work with tonight. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Inside of all, he walked it. That is the second walk, third walk, given up by Kravik tonight. The Indians have been very successful with their leadoff men on it. Three times they've been on tonight, and they've scored two of those three. Kansas City just came up with two of the six. Texas four, Kansas City three. And the batter is Andre Thornton. Got on in an air to lead off the second. Came around to score. Officially, he's 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out his last time up. Well, sorry we didn't give a lot of money away on that big payoff inning tonight. You know, when we give it away, it's an indication the White Sox are having a pretty good inning. But for the year, for the month, the White Sox gave away $4,725. $900 more than they gave a year ago. Here's a pitch up high a ball. Soderholm came racing down looking for the bunt. Brett hit a home run in his 13th and the 6th with none on for Kansas City. Toronto's still trailing Minnesota 4-1 to at the end of 6. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Attempts to bunt. Misses a strike. Forty loyal Sox fans from Gino's Pizza Hut. Pizza Pub in Thornton, Illinois are here tonight. Trying to see the White Sox take three out of four in this homestand. Right now they trail three to nothing in the eighth. Kravick working out of the stretch delivers. Here's a bunt to the right side. Lamar Johnson can't throw to second because the runner's down there. Throws to first and gets the force out. The sacrifice is successful going from three to four. So a runner in scoring position and Ron Pruitt the batter. He's one for three tonight. With Spencer with the glove on the other hand. He could have made that play, but Lamar had to turn and make a full pivot. It might have been a tough play for him. Pruitt single to lead off the fourth inning. Advanced to second on a sacrifice that was a fielder's choice sacrifice and was forced out on a very unusual play. Here's a pitch inside a ball with Pruitt at second, Bakhti at first and nobody out. Dade punted the ball back to the mound, popped it up, Kravik let it drop, picked it up, threw to third to force out Pruitt who hadn't even left second, threw down to second to get the double play and could not get Mr. Dade for the triple play and Essien apparently has gotten something in his eye as he goes off towards the Sox dugout and is being treated now by trainer Charlie Sad between the dugout and home plate boy after getting 13 runs here two nights ago the White Sox have managed only one run in the last 16 innings combination of Garland and Waits it's almost like Koufax and Drysdale, though neither one throws as hard as those two. <laughs> I guess that's probably an improper comparison. But they have been pitching like superstars here tonight and last night. Left-hander delivers. Here's a pitch outside of all. Falling behind Pruitt here. Two balls and no strikes. I've hit off both of them, and I'll just tell you, they throw about a three inches faster. <laughs> Texas just got a run in the bottom of the sixth, so they've extended their lead now back up to two runs over Kansas City. Here's a pitcher, a swing and a fly ball to right field. Nordhagen coming in. He's there and he's got it. And there are two down. So there's two out and Bruce Bakke the batter. One for two tonight officially. Got on first base on a fielder's choice but was credited with a sacrifice. Toronto just scored in the seventh, so it's four to two Minnesota. The game is now in the bottom of the eighth. Four to two. Minnesota out in front of Toronto. Minnesota's batting in the top half of the eighth inning. Here's the pitch to Bakhti inside a ball. Mark Littell came on to pitch in that sixth inning against Texas, and the Rangers got a run. Indianapolis just got two more off of Chris Knapp. They lead four to three at the in the sixth inning. 
Left hand who delivers. Here's the pitch. And he caught the outside corner with a strike. This is the final time for the Indians in Chicago. These two teams have split the first four games in this ballpark. Cleveland threatening to win the series here at Comiskey Park. The White Sox have already won the series at Cleveland as they took the first three games with two remaining. Left-hander ready, the 1-1 pitch, and it's a strike in the outside corner again, 1-2. and two. Tom Borwinkle of the Chicago Bulls and his family here tonight. Tom of right outside Cleveland. Rooting for the White Sox, though. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Swinging a grounder down to Lamar Johnson at first. He's got it. Steps in the bag, and that retires the side. So the leadoff walk is stranded at second base. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The White Sox need three to get back in it. It's Cleveland three, the White Sox nothing. This summer, you can really get around with a transfer from RTA. In the city, in the suburbs, wherever you want to go. Suburban buses, Nortran, Westtown Suburban Transit, and all CTA buses and L trains. You can travel in Chicago, in Aurora, Joliet, Elgin, Waukegan, Wilmette, Maywood, Oak Lawn, Des Plaines, wherever you want to go, the RTA makes it possible. And if you start with the CTA, you can get a transfer that's good on suburban RTA lines. So go to the beaches, the lakes, the amusement parks, the ball games, wherever there's something you want to see or do, there's an RTA way to get you around. For more information, write RTA 300 North State Street, Chicago 60610. Roy, Warren Brown along with Jimmy Pearsall back at Comiskey Park. It'll be up to Eric Satterholm, Jim Essien, and Ralph Gar to get something going here in the 8th. Anybody gets on, Alan Bannister would come up. Rick Waits is allowed only three hits. A leadoff single, which is the best hit base hit of the night by Zisk. In the second, he proceeded to retire the next three hitters. Zisk was stranded at first. Then Orta punted his way on to lead off the fourth inning. But Waits struck out the next three men. And then an infield hit by Orta with two out of the sixth. First pitch is inside a ball to Soderholm. Eric O for two tonight. Fans talking it up. They like to see the Sox get something going. Here's the pitch, a breaking ball, outside, blow a ball. Two balls and no strikes. Looks like the White Sox are going to have to win to maintain that game and a half lead over Minnesota. Here's a fastball, low ball three. Now we're going to get some activity. Looks like Jim Kern, it is, coming out of the bullpen, their hard-throwing right-hander who defeated the White Sox five times a year ago. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Strike on the inside part of the plate. Mark Johnson is up throwing for the White Sox. Now Soderholm steps out of the box, gets his sign from Bobby Knopf. Like to see the leadoff man get on here. Here's the 3-1 pitch. He walked him inside of all. That's the second walk that he has given up, and now Jeff Torborg coming out of the dugout. And we have another right-hander up in the bullpen for Cleveland. Pat Dobson, so they've got Kern and Dobson, a pair of right-handers. Nineteen thousand and seventeen here tonight. Another good crowd considering the bad weather all day. Weatherman Jimmy said it was going to be a great day. They didn't tell us it wouldn't start until four or five in the afternoon. So the conversation is broken up and Jim Essien steps up. Essien 0 for 2. Need to get another man on to get that tying run up. Right now the tying run is in the on-deck circle. Here's the pitch. Shorten up the bunt and takes the strike. He's just trying to get on, Lauren. He was hoping to get a ball right there, do anything. He, he wants to get on the best way he can. I hope he takes a shot between first and second. The Indians aren't looking for him to bunt. Here's the pitch. 
strike two. Oh, that was about letter high. So Essien quickly in the hole, two strikes. Sauter home with the lead off of first. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a long drive to left field. Going back, however, is Bakhti. He's there and he's got it. That ball didn't quite get into the gap enough. And Bakhti only had to go over about 10 feet. Reached up and hauled it in. Got good wood on the ball, but pulled it a little too much. And there's one out. We'd like to get three, but you'd be happy with two or just get on the board so you can get things rolling. But I imagine it, he'll be out of here if somebody gets a base hit right now. Baltimore scored three in the ninth, and they beat Seattle four to three. That's the fourth consecutive win for the Orioles and the fifth consecutive loss for Seattle. California's leading Boston in the ninth. 6-3, to three, so the Red Sox in jeopardy of losing ground to both the Orioles and the Yankees. Here's the pitch to Ralph Garn. It's a strike. So after walking Sauter home, he has thrown nothing but strikes to Essien and to Garn. Left-hander working out of the stretch. Buddy Bell playing in. Here's the pitch, and it's strike two. Twice now, he got in front of Essien 0-2 and, and Gar 0-2. You know, it's terrific. 1,221,413. That is really outstanding, these fans here in Chicago. Two strikes on the batter. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul. Just got a piece of it. Rick Rennick will be giving away an $85 digital watch after the game. Two strikes on the batter. A runner at first. One out. We're at the bottom of the eighth. Cleveland three. The White Sox nothing. Here's the pitch. Swing and a grounder to the right side. Kuiper comes up with it. Throws. He got him. Nice play by Dwayne Kuiper. And on the play, Soderholm goes to second. And would you believe it's the first time tonight the White Sox have had a runner at second base. So now it'll be up to Alan Bannister to bring him home. Alan drove in the lone run last night. Gar had the right idea. But Piper got over quickly and got it. And there are two out. Bannister 0 for 3 tonight. The White Sox have had only five balls to the outfield, plus this single. Last night, they only had, the outfield had four putouts. Here's a swing and a grounder to the shortstop. This will be the inning. Duffy throws him out easily. And every time the White Sox have gotten a leadoff man on, he has been stranded at first. Tonight, at least he got to second in this inning. But it... We'll take three to tie it in the ninth. That is if the White Sox hold him here in the ninth. So we go to the ninth. Cleveland three, the Sox nothing. First batter in the ninth inning, center fielder, Paul Day. that brought home a run in the second and a two-run homer by Bell in the third. That's all the scoring tonight. A swing and a miss by Dade as he leads off the ninth. Randy Wiles up in the bullpen throwing for the White Sox. But that is all. Rick Waits is needed as he has shut out the White Sox. Here's a pitch outside a ball. The White Sox have not been shut out in a 110 games this year. They were shut out the final game a year ago. Left-hander delivers. There's a swing and a foul coming straight back. White Sox nowhere near the record. I think I may have mentioned one time that the Yankees had the record, which is true, on uh, not being shut out, but uh, the years were wrong. I had the early 60s was the early 30s ball club with Ruth Garrett, Lazari, Crosetti, Bill Dickey, Joe Sewell, Earl Combs. Here's the 1-2 pitch. There's a swing and a pop-up to the right side in foul territory. 
Essien giving chase. He's over there, and he's got it. Essien was on the dirt. He ran on the wet turf. Then he ran across the on-deck circle, which is a slick surface, through the water, and then back onto the dirt again, ever so gingerly, and he got it. And there's one out. Brett Kendall, the catcher, 0 for 3 tonight. The National League record for a team not being shut out is 182 games, the Philadelphia Phillies. That was from August 17th, 1893 to May 10th, 1895. Here's a swing and a looper going out to right field. Order going out there. He's got it. Second baseman got a good jump on the ball and got it. And there's two up and two down in the ninth. Looking to the bottom of the ninth, it'll be Orta, Zisk, and Johnson. The face waits. White Sox got only five hits last night and three tonight. After getting 13 runs on 12 hits the night before, including six home runs. Frank Duffy. Punts down the left side, and Soderholm has it. Throws! He didn't get him. He beat it up. Very easy to punt on this field with the rain that we've been having because that ball does not break after it gets on the grass and cuts the other way or on the dirt. It just has a tendency to stay fair. So Soderholm, the only thing he could do is try to get him instead of letting it roll because if he had let it roll, there would have been no chance. That was his only chance, and he was unable to get him. So it's a bunt single, sixth hit for Cleveland. The Indians got 13 last night, six here tonight. And Duffy is now two for three, Dwayne Kuyper the batter. Here goes the runner, and it gets away from the catcher. Here he comes around second, going for third. Here's the throw, and he throws it away, but the shortstop backs it up. And going all the way to third, We're trying to find out exactly what the official scorer called it. As Duffy now is at third, a ball and no strikes to Kuiper. A runner at third with two out. Soderholm playing in now. They're looking for Kuiper to try to bunt. Lamar Johnson's playing back. If he bunts down the right side, Now Kuiper steps out. A bunt single with nobody on and two out by Duffy. Advanced to third. He'll either be a wild pitch or a pass ball. Here's the pitch way outside of all. 2-0. and oh. Three to nothing, Cleveland. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right field. And Nordhagen's there, and he's got it, and that retires the side. The call on Duffy, they give him credit on a stolen base. He was off, and an air on the catcher. Stolen base, wild pitch. That's the call. All right. Well, there was no damage done, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. The White Sox need three to tie and four to win as Cleveland leads it three to nothing. Lauren Brown back at Comiskey Park as we go to the bottom of the ninth. The White Sox need three to tie and four to win it as the Indians lead three to nothing. This is the first time that I can remember all year that the White Sox have been shut out going to the ninth inning. The record in the major leagues for most games without being shut out. Here's the pitch to Orta, and it's evolved. Is 308 games by the New York Yankees, August 3rd, 1931 to August 2nd, 1933. Here's the 1-0 pitch outside of all, ball two. So as you can see, the White Sox are not close to that at all. Now Duffy goes to talk to Waits. George Orta has two of the three hits, a bunt single and an infield hit. He is two for three. Richie Zisk has the other hit. Everybody else with a lot of offers tonight. Waits has walked a pair. Here's the pitch. And he takes a strike and a breaking ball. He's walked two and struck out five. 
California snapped Boston's 11-game winning streak, 7-4 to tonight. So Baltimore and the Yankees pick up ground on the Red Sox. Left-hander goes in the windup. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a foul back to the screen. It's even up now at 2-2. Two two. They're in the bottom of the eighth at Texas. Texas 5, Kansas City 3. They're in the ninth at Toronto. Minnesota 4, Toronto 2. Chris Knapp and Iowa are trailing Indianapolis 6-3 at the end of 7. Here's the 2-2 pitch. There's a swing and a fly ball down the left field line. Bakhti coming after it. He's there, and he can't get it. It goes into the box seats. That ball, fortunately, went out of play. Otherwise, Mr. Orta would have been out. Pete Vukovic has come on to pitch for Toronto in the ninth inning. Two balls and two strikes to Orta, the leadoff man here in the ninth. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a pop-up. Buddy Bell coming down the line. The third baseman is there, and he's got it. And there's one out. Well, he has been busy the last two nights. He had seven assists and one put out last night. He's got six assists and one put out already tonight. So there's one out, and Richie Zisk, the batter. Zisk, one for three, a single in the second inning. He struck out in the fourth and again in the sixth. Left-hander ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a miss. Strike one. The White Sox have scored only one run in the last 18 innings. This is the 19th inning. Here's a pitch on the inside part of the plate. A strike. Waits out in front of him. Two strikes. Left-hander ready, the two-strike pitchers, a swing and a base hit to left field. Buddy Bell dove and almost came up with it. And Zisk gets his second hit. That's the fourth hit off of Waits. And they throw the ball away, coming in, and Zisk goes down to second. The throw into the infield got away. Zisk goes to second base, and now here comes Jeff Torborg. Torborg, the manager of the Indians, on the mound, that's an air charge to Botke. That's the first Indian air. This is only the second time the White Sox have had a runner advance to second base. And the first time was in the last inning after two out. So now Lamar Johnson, the batter, 0 for 3, looking for his first hit of the night. Here's the pitcher swinging a foul coming back onto the roof. White Sox trailing. They need to get a man on to bring the tying run up to the plate. Here's the one strike pitch. Swing and a topper. Foul. The umpire grabs it. Foul ball. Or rather, the catcher grabs it. The umpire signals foul. That ball didn't get into fair territory. But Lamar is in the hole now. Two strikes. That's what you'd call a swinging butt that went nowhere. Dribbled out in front, but the catcher grabbed it. And when he did, it was still in foul territory. Two strikes on the batter. Ziss got a single with two strikes. Be a great one to come back and win here. Left hander ready. Here's the pitch. Outside and low of all. This with a fastball. One ball and two strikes. Texas batting in the bottom of the eighth. They lead Kansas City 5-3. to three. Left-hander ready. The 1-2 pitch. There's a swing and a foul going out of play out onto 35th Street. 
Minnesota leading Toronto 4-2 in the ninth. White Sox look like they're going to have to win here to keep from losing any ground. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Second time he's gotten Lamar. That's his sixth strikeout. So now there's two out. And Shep Levin the batter. Shed 0 for 3 tonight. 0 for 7 in the series against the Indians. Boy, a lot of 0-4s in this series against Cleveland. They came in here loosey-goosey. They had lost six in a row. They're not going anywhere. No pressure at all. And they've gotten some outstanding pitching and timely hitting. That's what it takes. Waits ready out of the stretch. The pitch swing and a miss on a fastball up around his eyes. Dreesen hit a home run for Cincinnati with two on in the first against the Dodgers, and the Dodgers have come back with Lopes hitting a solo home run. Three to one Cincinnati in the first. Here the Sox trail three to nothing. A runner at second and two out in the bottom of the ninth. The one strike pitch. There's a swing and a shot into right field, a base hit. Here comes this to round the score. The White Sox will not be shut out, and the tying run will come up. It's a three to one ball game, and that is going to be all for Mr. Waits as Kern will come out of the bullpen. Nordhagen is due up, but we look for Oscar Gamble to come up. Oscar now gets off the bench, looks for a helmet. That is Lemon's 50th RBI of the year. So Rick Waits, who did a superb job as he shut the White Sox out for eight and two-third innings, as things stand right now, that run is an unearned run. So Waits pitched eight and two-third innings, allowing one run on five hits. He walked two, and he struck out six. So Jim Turner, one of the top relievers in the game, throwing right-hander comes in to face the tying run, which will be Oscar Gamble. Gamble comes in. Oscar hitting 272, 22 homers and 53 RBIs. Kern making his 46th appearance of the year for the Indians. He's won four, he's lost seven with an earned run average of 3.44, and he has 13 saves to his credit. He's allowed only two home runs all year. The Indians have won 47 games this year, and Kern has been involved and has had a hand in 17 of them. base hit here to bring the winning run up to the plate. Paul Day, the center fielder, moving way over in right center. Pruitt playing back in right. Bakke shading a little bit over towards the center field area, but basically they play him as an extreme pull hitter, giving him all the real estate out in left center field and almost straightaway center field. Oscar last night was 0 for 2 against the Indians. But he has hit well against his former teammates. Kern is ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to left center field. Coming in is Bakhti. He's there. He takes it. The game is over. One run. Unearned. Two hits. One air. One left. So the Indians sweep the two-game series against the White Sox, and the White Sox split the homestand, winning two and... So we'll be back to wrap it up and check the standings and everything for you. 
right after this message. The totals in the ball game for the Indians, three runs, six hits, and one air. Five men left on. For the White Sox, one run, five hits, and two airs. Five men left on. The winning pitcher, Rick Waits, six and four. And Jim Kern picks up his... 14 save of the year by virtue of throwing but one pitch. He got the job done. And the loser is Ken Kravick, who is now 7-4 and four and against Cleveland. He is 0-2 lifetime. Both games, he allowed the Indians three runs, which really is not too bad. You figure a guy has ERA of three. But the White Sox did not score any runs for him a year ago when the Indians shut him out 3 to nothing. And tonight, they score but one, an unearned run. The Indians got an unearned run on an air in the second, and then a two-run homer in the third by Bell. And then the White Sox coming up with an unearned run in the ninth inning, and Kern getting gambled to end the ball game. So the White Sox are now 19 games over 500. They have won 65 and lost 46. Minnesota is at Toronto winning 4-2 in the ninth. If the Twins win that game, they'll be back to a half a game lead, a half a game deficit. The White Sox will be a half a game out in front. So what that means, in essence, is that the White Sox, who came home for a four-game homestand and split the four, winning two and losing two, have kept pace with Minnesota. They came home with a half a game lead, and they'll go on the road with a half a game lead. Texas is out in front of Kansas City 5-3. to three. If the Rangers win that, they'll be two games out with Kansas City two and a half back. If Kansas City should win, they'll be a game and a half out with Texas three back. In the Eastern Division, California snapped Boston's 11-game winning streak seven to three. Baltimore came up with three in the ninth and beat Seattle four to three. And Mike Torres tossed a two-hit shutout as the Yankees beat Oakland three to nothing. So Baltimore now only one and a half games behind the Yankees, or behind Boston, and the Yankees are four games behind the Boston Red Sox. Over in the National League, the games of consequence, the Phillies beat Boston, or Montreal 10-5 this afternoon, and Pittsburgh beat New York 9-1 to tonight. So the Phillies have a three-game lead over the Cubs, and the Pirates are at three and a half back. The Dodgers are at Cincinnati. The Dodgers are hosting Cincinnati with the Reds leading 3-1 in the bottom of the second. And Houston beat San Francisco 7-5. Let's check our wire quickly here. No, nothing new. Minnesota is still out in the ninth with Vukovic being called upon in relief in that ninth inning. So the White Sox, if Toronto cannot pull it out, will take on a nine-game road trip and leave with a half a game lead. The White Sox will be taking on the Texas Rangers tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. Tomorrow night, the White Sox will send Francisco Barrios against Doc Ellis. So the White Sox win their first two on this homestand and then lose their next two to the Cleveland Indians who came in here with a six game losing streak and they snap it last night and go on to sweep the series as both Wayne Garland and Rick Waits did an outstanding job of pitching. So whether the White Sox bats are tired or not, who knows? We do know one thing, and that is that Garland, along with Waits, did an outstanding job of pitching here in this series. So you got to give credit where credit is due, and they deserve it. So the White Sox end the season play here at Comiskey Park against the Indians, winning two and losing three. The White Sox have already won the series at Cleveland, winning the first three with two more to go. So the White Sox against Cleveland this year have won five and lost three. We're sort of stalling here, waiting to see if there's anything new coming out of uh, Toronto and Texas, and nothing's coming out of giving a recap on some of the uh, minor leagues right now. So we'll just shove off here, and you'll know in the morning or later tonight. Well, stay tuned now. Rick Rennick will pass along those finals to you when he gets them. The Sox will either be a half a game out in front or a game and a half in front of Minnesota. This has been White Sox Baseball, brought to you tonight by Chevrolet Trucks, trucks that are built to stay tough, by the champion Spark Plug Company, who reminds you that the fresher your plugs, the better your mileage, by Stroh's Beer, for more than 200 years, real beer lovers know that it's Stroh's. 
and by True Value Hardware Stores. Thank you for listening, and hope you'll join us again tomorrow night from Texas. And we just got some uh, scores from Texas. The Rangers just came up with three in the eighth, so they lead Kansas City by a score of eight to three going into the ninth. And Adams has just hit a three-run homer off of Vukovic at Toronto. So Toronto in Minnesota, it's Minnesota seven, Toronto two in the bottom of the ninth. So it looks like that Minnesota and Texas will be the winners tonight. So it looks like the White Sox will go to Texas with a half a game lead over Minnesota a two-and-a-half game lead over Kansas City, and in between will be Texas two out. So that's it. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow night from Arlington, Texas, when the White Sox and Barrios take on the Rangers and Doc Ellis. Our engineer has been Dan Hozak. Stay tuned now for Rick Rennick beginning away an $85 digital watch, and Fred Sanders comes your way at midnight. This has been a WMAQ sports presentation. Martinez won for four today and won for six in the series. Roden has the who, uh, Dodger one breaker on, has a big lead. Buckner, of course, not holding the pitcher on. One away, Russell's pitch. Swung on a hard drive over the head of the shortstop into left center field. Roden will stop with a one base advance as Jerry Morales wheels the throw in. And with one away, they have men at first and second. Now Bill Russell stepping in. Double down the right field line in the first inning off rookie Dennis Lamp. Dennis had the thrill of getting uh, a couple of hits today. And after he got his first one in his debut in the majors, they got that ball into the dugout so he can have it as a souvenir. Russell takes in the first pitch of the ball. Milwaukee took the first game from the White Sox today, 7-1. to one. Rinko slated to start game two for the Brewers, or for the Sox. Here's the pitch. Slaps a one-hopper back to Russell. Throws to the Aces at second, the relay, and they got themselves an easy double play. No runs, two hits, one man left on. And we need a king-size rally. Cubs coming to bat, bottom of the ninth inning at Bridget Field. Los Angeles still leading five to one. <laughs> Water from God's country. Sparkling, pure spring water. Gottlieb Holland spent years looking for water like this. He found it in La Crosse, Wisconsin in 1853. Holland still uses this water today to pure brew, double brew a great light beer called Old Style in a traditional old world way called Croissant. Croissant is the most natural way to brew beer and the most expensive. But at Old Star, we don't aim to make the most beer, only the best. That's why we use Croissant and sparkling pure Wisconsin spring water. Taste the difference they make. Try Old Star. Pure brewed in God's country. G. Holliman Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Time has run it out. But it's not running out for those of you who want to get the Ernie Max Hall of Fame souvenir montage. It's on sale out here at Wrigley Field for only a buck. Or if you want to get it uh, through the mail, send a dollar and a quarter. That'll cover not only the montage, but the postage and handling costs. And send it to Souvenirs, Wrigley Field, Chicago. 60613. Suitable for framing. It shows uh, highlights of Ernie's career with the Cubs. I think it'll be a keepsake to two long treasures. Steve Ontiveros has walked three times today. He's leading off the ninth inning against Roden. He's three outs away from getting his 14th win against eight defeats. Right under his first pitch, fastball, a little high, ball one. I want to remind you, uh, Chicago listeners, that after the scoreboard following the ball game, here's the pitch. 
Another fastball this time, a strike ball with the letters, one one On the Mike Pyle show, Mike's guest is going to be Wally Chambers of the Bears. And that'll be interesting. Wally with that uh, intriguing new contract. 1-1 one, one delivery. Out of Bears looks at a strike. Gordon's breaking ball down around the batter's knees. Ball one, strike two. Wind up, and the one-two pitch swung on and fouled. A good fastball that he got a piece up and fouled it back sharply. Tomorrow, Rick Russell. Scheduled to go against the Giants, Jim Barr. One-two pitch. There's a swing and a foul out of play. Third base side. Cubs have had one hit and no more in each of the first eight innings today. The run tally with two out, nobody on, a walk, a single, and an error by the Dodgers. Four double plays have been racked up by Los Angeles today. One to pitch, Steve takes the ball inside of the knees, it's two and two on him. Seats available tomorrow and Tuesday. Hope to see you here. 2-2 delivery. Swung on. Pulls the ground ball right side. Martinez is over there. The second baseman throw. Retires out of areas for the first time today. Now the know, Lee, that Rudin looks like he's about as tough a pitcher as we've seen in a long time, isn't he? Yes, he's held uh, good stuff all during this ball game. And he's never given us a shot. The shots that we did have, the... Infield has come up with double plays. Take us out of the inning. First time we've seen him this year, the way he's pitched here today, I hope it's the last time, unless we look at him in a playoff game. Manny Creel swings. There's a drive in the left center field for a base hit. Monday over to cut it off. Creel makes a long turn and holds for the single. And that's Manny's second hit of the day. For the Cubs, their ninth hit of the afternoon. Dean Kleins is going to bat for George Middlewald. Here in the ninth inning with a man on first. And one away. Kleins is a pinch hitter. Five for 16. With seven runs batted in. as a pinch hitter. Tommy Lasorda. Elbows tucked in at the sides. Stomach knocked up him too well. Dug him out to the mound to block the road. He's got his bullpen crew ready. Cubs with a hit in the first, one in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, one in the seventh, one in the eighth, and one so far here in the ninth. And only one run for the day with a little bit of help from the Dodgers back in the fourth inning. I'm very happy, Lou, with the work of Dennis Lamp here today. Yes, he did a fine job. He very seldom compliment a youngster in a losing cause, but he did a fine job until he, he tired in that uh, sixth inning when they scored two runs. It's promise for the future. In an area where every uh, club, virtually every club, always looking for help, and that, of course, in the pitching. Scrappy Gene Klein stepping into the batter's box, hitting 307 for the year. Rodin's delivery. Right hander swings, goes to right field, and drive is going to be in there for a base hit. Creel going to third. Reggie Smith wheels a long throw into second base, and Klein didn't waste any time. What with it? Drilled it inside the right field line. And Reggie Smith doing a good job of getting over there in a hurry. Keep the ball getting by it for extra bases. This is the first inning today that the Cubs have had more than one hit. Now Larry Bittner is going to be the next pinch hitter. And all of a sudden, Tom Lasorda has kind of a worried look over there. Pitching close. Red Adams standing alongside of him with Monty Basco and all of his assistants. First appearance in the series, and Larry as a pinch hitter is three for eight with two runs batted in. That is going to be it for Rick Roden. 
He has worked eight and a third innings this afternoon. That base hit off the bat of Pines was a Cubs tenth of the afternoon. And he's going to be leaving. With the score, the Dodgers five, the Cubs one. Coming in the bottom of the ninth inning, we have a delay in the ball game. Let's take time out for this message. Lance Ratson, R-A-U-T-C-H-A-N, big left-hander, yesterday celebrated his 25th birthday. Brought him up just recently. He's been in eight ball games in relief. And in those eight games, he has two wins, one loss. Third run average is three. Big fellow has worked eight and two-thirds innings and given up nine hits and three runs all earned. third base. Gene Clines is at a pinch hit for the time at first. Larry for the year, batting 287. 111 hits so far this year, and the first pick from the South Bar is too low for ball one. Lance Ratzel. This is stretch the pitch. The pass ball. It's blown away. All two. Top of the batting order to follow Victor. That is for the four run lead in the ninth. One out. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Bittner takes. There's a strike. He was taking all the way. Tommy John, who was a loser here the other day, getting in there, does have watching closely. 2 1 delivery, swung on, bouncing ball to second. Bags the runner, throws the first base. And wouldn't you know, that is another double play. The fifth of the ball game by the Dodgers to end it. Wines at the dirt out there, trying to avoid the tag by Martinez. Couldn't do it. Unbelievable. No runs, two hits, one man left in the bases. So the Dodgers take the final game of the series. Los Angeles, five, and the Chicago Cubs, one. The leader... Well, it's hard to think that the ball club could come up with uh, many more twin killings for the nine-inning game than the Dodgers did. Five of them here this afternoon. Boy, they hurt well, they won the final game of the series. The Cubs, however, still with an enviable record over Los Angeles here in Chicago this year. They take the series at uh, Wrigley Field, beating them four out of six for the season. The Dodgers with five runs and 11 hits, one error that led to the Cubs' only run. Left six men on. The Cubs one run, ten hits, no errors. Eight men left. Rick Roden, with relief help from rookie Lance Robson, gets his 14th win against eight defeats. And Dennis Lamp, the rookie, making his debut, suffering the defeat before a paid crowd of just over 26,000 and a total of 26,174 paid. Two hours and 21 minutes. And I guarantee you, a double play was not what I was anticipating on that last one, Luke. Well, you have to give the credit to the pitching and the defense of the uh, Dodgers. Lamp did a good job. He held them in 3-1 to one for five innings, and then he sort of tired... Garcia Jones was uh, flowing quite rapidly early in that ball game, and he was high. And uh, when the Dodgers scored two runs in the first, and Roden hit one out uh, in the second to help his cause, but Lamp also uh, not only with a good right arm looks like he might become a pretty good hitter. He got two hits today in his debut as a Cub pitcher, but it was the defense and Roden's pitching that kept the Cubs away. We didn't have many opportunities. Only once, that in the ninth inning. Then we get two hits in an inning. So he scattered those base hits all over uh, the ballpark today and all singles, not a one extra base hit for the Cubs. Yeah, we'll see if we can't get back on the winning track tomorrow when the Giants come to town. We'll be back with more about that one. Our broadcast from Wrigley Field where the sun is now shining brightly has been brought to us today by 
General Finance of 65, Chicago Land Officer. Crest will be shooting for his 17th win. The big fella has lost only five ball games. He pitched the beauty his last outing to notch win number 16. And his mound opponent, a tough right-hander for the San Francisco Giants, Jim Barr. San Francisco here tomorrow and again on Tuesday. And then the Cubs will be off on a long, long road trip. Ron Cohen, our engineer today, Jack Minovich, our producer, Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreaux, the Dodgers, the winner. They came up with five double plays in the ball game, including the one that ended it, and they win the ball game five to one. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. <laughs> with you at Wrigley Field, and it's time now for the scoreboard, brought to us by your local Z-Bart, auto and truck rust-proofing dealers. By the way, Lou Brock has moved a little bit nearer immortality. Remember Blake Cullen was here a few moments ago from the National League uh, office, public relations uh, director, and he mentioned that in the meetings that the owners and general managers had at Kansas City this past week, they... Uh, come up with a Lou Brock Award that's going to be given to the leading base dealer in the National League each year. Well, Lou Brock today got a stolen base for the Cardinals in the third inning against the San Diego Padres, and he now needs only five more stolen bases to become the all-time leader in the major leagues. He will then surpass the total set by the immortal late uh, Ty Cobb. Lou Brock, number 888 this afternoon with one in the third inning against San Diego. And, of course, he and all the rest of the Cardinals are going to be here at Wrigley Field when the Cubs come back from this next road trip on Monday, September 5th and 6th. And those will be the final two dates for the Cubs and the Cards here in Chicago this year. Outside of that stolen base, things aren't going so well for the Cards this afternoon. They lost, uh, or they beat San Diego last night 7-1. But this afternoon, it is San Diego 7, the Cardinals nothing. Bob Ochinko, with a record of 5-8, and eight, has blanked the cards through the first eight innings. Dave Kingman walloped his 19th home run of the year for San Diego in the top of the first inning of Tom Underwood. That was a grand slam homer for Sky King, his sixth in his career. They put five runs on the board. They added another in the third, one in the seventh, and they're now... Freezing seven to nothing at St. Louis in the bottom of the ninth. And so they, unless they come up with a miracle down there, the Cardinals will remain one game behind the Chicago Cubs in the Eastern Division race. And the Cardinals opponents tomorrow are going to be these Dodgers who leave Chicago now and go down to St. Louis. And they expect to send Bert Hooten against the Cardinals, John Denny, down there tomorrow night. Philadelphia's Phillies will be playing the host of the Houston Astros at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia tonight. And Steve Carlton is slated to go after his 18th win of the year. And his mound opponent, young Mark Lemongello, who's 5-13 and 13 for Houston. San Francisco and the Pittsburgh Pirates are now in the bottom of the ninth inning at Pittsburgh. And the score, San Francisco 5, the Pittsburgh Pirates 4. That's in the bottom of the ninth. Evans at a two-run homer. And a big one so far for the Giants in the top of the eighth inning, Evans' 13th homer of the year. Gary Thomason homered for San Francisco in the first inning with the bases empty off Bruce Keeson. We'll be back to take a look at more of the action in both the American and National Leagues right after this. Ray's Rapid Rust Proofing? Meg Doolittle. You rust proofed my car just a year ago, right? You gave me this chicken feed warranty, right? Excuse me, ma'am. One year in my car looks like a relic from the Oki Finoki Swamp. And this warranty, this is true, this warranty wouldn't guarantee an old raincoat against rust. All right, there you Listen, are. listen, fella, I spent a lot of money, and what'd you get me? A car that's camouflaged for hiding out in junkyards. Right, there, please. This is a long house Chinese laundry. The rust proofers went out of business six months ago. When it comes to rust protection, you need a name you can trust. A name you're sure is going to be around for a long, long time. Zubart. The Zubart system was invented and patented right here in the United States, and we've been protecting cars longer than any other name in the business. A unique rust-proofing sealant applied by factory-trained technicians using specially designed tools and equipment. You see, we're the original, and we always will be. Zubart. It's us for rust. 
Z-Bart is listed in the yellow pages under automobile, undercoating, and rust proofing. This is WGN Radio Chicago. I'm Vince Lloyd, and I want to remind you that in a few moments here after our scoreboard, Mike Pyle is going to be coming on the air at our studios in Chicago with his Sunday show, and his guest today is going to be Wally Chambers of the Chicago Bears. We ought to be happy that the Bears came up with a victory last night down at Houston. Not so happy are the White Sox this afternoon up at Milwaukee because they got <laughs> by the Brewers 7-1. Milwaukee hitting them with six runs in the fourth inning to break it wide open. Mellon uh, with a homer in that fourth inning for the Brewers with one man on his second of the year. Lemon homer to the Sox in the eighth with the bases empty. That for Lemon, his 17th home run of the year. And back in the first inning, Walford homered for uh, Milwaukee to get them on the board as Ken Kravick yielded that homer, the second of the year by Walford. And it uh, started Kravick to defeat his sixth loss against seven victories. Haas going all the way for Milwaukee. He is now nine and eight for the year. Second game not yet underway. Minnesota has come back to take uh, the lead again over the Baltimore Orioles. It's the Twins, eight, and Baltimore, five. That's at the end of seven innings of play. Minnesota starts today, one game behind the Kansas City Royals. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball.